Hello, boys and girls. From me, Henry, and Nipper. Now, if you like tonight's video, hit the like button and ring the bell. Press subscribe. This means you will be the first to be notified every time that me, Henry, brings out a new video. And remember, it costs you nothing to subscribe. Now, are we snuggled in then? So we shall begin. Tonight's story is called The Golden Bird about a boy who meets a very wise fox indeed in his search for a golden bird. Once upon a time a certain king had a beautiful garden and in the garden stood a tree which bore golden apples. These apples were always counted and about the time when they began to grow ripe it was found that every night one of them was gone. The king became very angry at this and ordered the gardener to keep watch all night under the tree. The gardener set his eldest son to watch but about 12 o'clock he fell asleep and in the morning another of the apples was missing. Then the second son was ordered to watch and at midnight he too fell asleep and in the morning another apple was gone. Then the third son was offered to keep watch but the gardener at first would not let him for fear some harm should come to him. However, at last he consented and the young man laid himself under the tree to watch. As the clock struck twelve, he heard a rustling noise in the air and the bird came flying that was of pure gold. And as it was, he heard a rustling noise in the air and it was snapping and whacking and trying to snap at one of the apples with its beak. The gardener's son jumped up and shot an arrow at it. But the arrow did the bird no harm. Only it dropped a golden feather from its tail and then flew away. The golden feather was brought to the king in the morning and all the council was called together. Everyone agreed that it was worth more than the wealth of the kingdom. But the king said, one feather is of no use to me. I must have the whole bird. The gardener's eldest son set out and thought to find the golden bird very easily. And when he had gone by a little way, he came to a wood. And by the side of the wood, he saw a fox sitting there. So he took his bow and made ready to shoot at it. Then the fox said, Do not shoot me, sir, for I will give you good counsel. I know what your business is and that you want to find the golden bird. You will reach a village in the evening and when you get there you will see two inns opposite each other. One of which is very pleasant and beautiful to look at. Go not in there, but rest for the night in the other, though it may appear to you to be very poor and mean. But the son thought to himself, What can such a beast as this know about the matter? So he shot his arrow at the fox, but he missed. It set up its tail above its back and ran into the woods. Then he went away and in the evening came to a village where the two inns were. And in one of these were people singing and dancing and feasting. But the other looked very dirty and very poor. I should be very silly, said he, if I went to the shabby house and left this charming place. So he went into the smart house and ate and drank at ease and forgot the bird and the country too. Time passed on and as the eldest son did not come back and no tidings were heard of him, the second son set out and the same thing happened to him. He met the fox who gave him the good advice but when he came to the two inns 
is that this brother was standing at the window with the money making was and called him to come in and he could not withstand the temptation but went in and forgot the golden bird and his country in the same manner time passed on and the youngest son too wished to set out the wide world to seek for the golden bird but his father would not listen to it for a long while for he was very fond of his son and was afraid that some ill luck might happen to him and also prevent him coming back however at last he was agreed that he should go so he would not rest at home as he was coming to the woods he met the fox and heard the same good counsel but he was thankful to the fox and did not attempt his life as his brothers had done so the fox said sit upon my tail and you will travel faster so he sat down and the fox began to run and away they went over the stock and stone so quick that their hair whistled in the wind when they came to the village the son followed the fox's counsel and without looking at him went to the shabby inn and rested there for the night at ease in the morning came the fox again and met him as he was beginning his journey and said go straight forward till you come to a castle before which lies a whole troop of soldiers fast asleep and snoring take no notice of them but go into the castle and pass on till you come to a room where the golden bird sits in a wooden cage close by it stands a beautiful golden cage but do not try to take the bird out of the shabby cage and put it in the handsome one otherwise you will repent it then the fox stretched out his tail again and the young man sat down and away they went over the stock and stone till their hair whistled in the wind before the castle gate all was as the fox had said so the son went in and found the chamber where the golden bird hung in a wooden cage and below stood the golden cage and the three golden apples that had been lost were lying close by it then thought he to himself it will be a very droll thing to bring away such a fine bird in this shabby cage so he opened the door and took hold of it and put in the golden cage but the bird set up such a loud scream that all the soldiers woke and they took him prisoner and carried him before the king the next morning the court sat to judge him and when all was heard it sentenced him to die unless he should bring the king a golden horse which he could run as swiftly as the wind as if he did not he had given the golden bird him for his own so he set out once more on his journey sighing and in great despair when on a sudden his friend the fox met him and said you see now what has happened on accord of you not listening to my counsel i will still however try to tell you how to find the golden horse if you will do as i bid you will go straight on till you come to the castle where the horse stands in his stall by his side will lie the groom fast asleep and snoring take away the horse quietly but be sure to put the old leather saddle upon him and not the golden one that is close by then the son sat, the son sat down on the fox's tail and away they went over the stock and stone till their hair whistled in the wind all went right and the groom lay snoring with his hand upon the golden saddle but when the son looked at the horse he thought it's a great pity to put the leather saddle on i will give him a good one said he i'm sure he deserves it and he looked upon the golden saddle the groom woke and cried out so loud that all the guards ran in and took him prisoner again and in the morning he was again brought before the court to be judged he was again sentenced to die but it was agreed that if he could bring to the, the beautiful princess he should live and have the bird and the horse given to him for his own 
Then he went away with very sorrowful look on his face. But the old fox came and said, Why did you listen to me? If you had, you have carried away both the bird and the horse. You will I once more give you counsel. Go straight on and in the evening you will arrive at the castle at 12 o'clock. At night the princess goes to the bathing house there. Go up to her and give her a kiss and she will let you lead her away. But take care you do not suffer any to go and take leave of her father and her mother. Then the fox stretched out his tail and away they went over stock and stone till their hair whistled in the wind again. As they came to the castle, all was as the fox had said, and at twenty, the twelve o'clock the young man met the princess going to the bath, and he gave her a kiss, and she agreed to run away with him, but begged with many tears that they would let her take leave of her father. At first he refused, but she wept still more and more, and fell at his feet, till at last he consented. But the moment she came to her father's house, the guards woke, and he was taken prisoner again. Then he was brought before the king, and the king said, You shall never have my daughter unless in eight days you dig away the hill that stops the view from my window. Now this hill was so big the whole world could not take it away. And when he had worked for seven days, as he had done very little, the fox came in and said, Lie down and go to sleep. I will work for you. In the morning when he woke, the hill was gone. So he went merrily to the king and told him, Now that it was removed, he must be given the princess. Then the king was obliged to keep his word. And away went the young man and the princess. And the fox came and said to him, we will have all three, the princess, the horse and the bird. Ah, said the young man, that would be a great thing, but how can you contrive it? Well, if you'll only listen, said the fox, it can be done. When you come to the king and he asks for the beautiful princess, you must say, here she is, then he will be very joyful, and you will mount the golden horse and they then will give you and put on your hand and take your leave of them but shake hands with the princess last then lift her quickly onto the horse behind you clap your spurs to his side and gallop away as fast as you can all went right then the fox said when you come to the castle where the bird is I will stay with the princess at the door and you will ride in and speak to the king. And when he says that it is the right horse, he will bring out the bird. But you must still sit still and say that you want to look at it to see whether it truly is the golden bird. And when you get it into your right hand, ride away. This too happened as the fox said. They carried off the bird, the princess mounted again and they rode away to the great wood. Then the fox came and said, Pray kill me and cut off my head and feet. But the young man refused to do so. So the fox said, Will at any rate give you good course for my feet? I have given you good counsel. Beware of two things. Ransom no one for the gallows and sit down by the side of no river. Then away he went. Well thought the young man. It's no hard matter to keep that advice. He rode with the princess till he came to a village where he left his two brothers. And when he'd heard a great noise and uproar, and when he asked what was the matter, the people said, two men were going to be hanged. As he had been nearer, he saw the two men were his brothers, who had, not, who had only just turned into a pair of robbers. So he said, cannot they in any way be saved? But the people said, no, unless you would bestow all his money upon the rascals and buy their liberty. Then he did not say, stay to think about the matter, but paid what was asked, and his brothers were given up, and he went on his way towards their home. 
and they came to the wood where the fox first met them. It was so cool and pleasant that the two brothers said, let's sit down by the side of the river and rest a while to eat and drink. So he said, yes, and forgot the fox's counsel and sat down on the side of the river and while he suspected nothing, they came behind and threw him down the bank. They took his princess and the horse and the bird and went home to the king, their master, and said, All this we have won by our labour. Then there was great rejoicing made, but the horse would not eat, the bird would not sing, and the princess wept. The youngest son fell to the bottom of the river's bed. Luckily it was dry, but his bones were almost broken and the bank was so steep that he could find no way out. Then the old fox came once more and scolded him for not following his advice. Otherwise no evil would have befallen him. Yet, said he, I cannot leave you here, so lay hold of my tail and hold fast. He then pulled him out of the river and said to him, as he got up on the bank, Your brothers have set watch to kill you if they find you in the kingdom. So he dressed himself as a poor man and came secretly to the king's court and was scarcely within the door when the horse began to eat, the bird began to sing and the princess left off weeping. Then he went to the king and told them of his brother's roguery and they were all seized and punished and he had the princess given him again. After the king's death, he was heir to their kingdom. A long while after, he went to walk one day in the woods, and the old fox met him again, and besought with him with tears in his eyes, begged to kill him and cut off his head and feet. So at last he did so, and in a moment, the fox was changed into a man, and turned out to be the brother of the princess who had been lost a great many, many years. Well, children, wasn't that a lovely story? So, nighty-night, children, nighty-night, children, nighty-night.